thanks for tuning in. Today I am working on a tray, but I'm actually going to be full, um, forming this into a bowl. But I'm using a tray mold because I want it to be a uniform thickness. Um, if you've watched my channel, you've seen me do um, the freeform vases where you just pour on a flat surface and you don't have a mold. And those are super, super thin. And as they get towards the edge, they actually get a little thinner. Um, this is going to be a bowl. So I wanted to have a little more substance. So I decided to use a mold. Um, this is a you know, kind of a geode shaped mold. Um, I've mixed up 12 ounces of resin. I am not 100% sure how much this one takes. I think it's around 10, but just to be safe, I mixed up 12. I could be wrong though. I should have measured first, but I'm just guessing. Um, for my colors today, I'm doing, I'm kind of in a summery mood. It's um, almost March 1st and <laughs> summer is like right around the corner, feels like. So I'm doing summer colors today. So I'm doing um, a yellow to orange fade in a transparent color. And then for the flower, I'm going to be doing it in red. Um, usually when I do flowers, I use white or I mix white with whatever the color is. This time I want to try it with no white and see what happens. So for the orange, I'm going to be using a mixture of two acrylic inks. These are not alcohol inks, these are acrylic inks. So I have the Azo Orange from Amsterdam and the Napthal Crimson from Liquitex. And my yellow is the Mixol. This is their Canary Yellow. Um, this yellow, if you only use a tiny bit, it is transparent. If you use too much, it becomes opaque. And then for my red flower, this is a color obsession paste in the color red chili. And this is just beautiful. It does not have a pink undertone or even an orange undertone. It's just straight red. And then around the edge, I'm going to put a little bit of glitter. This is from Eye Candy in the color Las Vegas. It's just a beautiful copper and it's got just a little bit of like a yellow gold shimmer to it. And then, um, I've got some clear. I'm just going to leave clear to pour in the center. So like I said, I mix up 12 ounces. I have, let's see what I have for the orange. I have about four. For the yellow, I have about four and a half. The red, I'm going to say this is maybe an ounce and a half. And about the same amount for the glitter. And then this is maybe an ounce and a half of clear. I don't know if that adds up to 12, but... <laughs> Give or take, that's what I have going on. All right, so mixing this up, um, I'm gonna start with just four drops of the orange and one drop of red and see what I get. All right, that is the exact shade I wanted. It's a, just a bit of a darker orange, nice and transparent. All right, for my yellow, I'm just gonna put one drop in here. You really don't need much with these mix -alls. They're very pigmented. So pretty. Okay. So the pigment paste, this is a very thick paste. Sometimes they're much more liquidy. Just gonna use about this much. I want it to be, and that's probably too much, about half that. I want this to be opaque. All right, and then the glitter. I think I'm just gonna put all this in there. I don't have much left. Such a pretty color. All right. That is everything. Oh, I need my stones for the center. One second going to use some of this coffee colored glass. This little tiny glass chips. All right, so I'm going to start with the glitter. Okay, now I'm going to pour the yellow. All 
All right, now the orange. I'm really hoping that the yellow and orange blend together. All right, now I'm gonna pour the clear in the center. Just push that orange out a bit. All right, so now I am going to take my little dotting tool. Where is it? And I'm gonna use um, the round end. And I'm just gonna go in here and lift up some of these bigger bubbles that are down on the surface of the mold. And I'm not actually touching the mold. It's kind of swirling the dotting tool above the bubble and it lifts it up. But I'm using the round end of this tool just in case I do touch the mold. And you could use a toothpick for this. Um, I like this tool though because it has that round end. I don't have to worry about scratching in the mold. All right, and then I'm going to use that same round end and just go around the outside edge. And this is just getting rid of any bubbles that might be trapped along the edge here. Okay, now I'm going to put the glass down. Let's grab a little spoon here. Now this glass, it will sink, but I like to kind of help it out with a toothpick. Spread it out a little. That just helps the bubbles work their way out of it. All right, now the red. So I'm gonna put this into a bag so I can pipe it a little bit easier. Sometimes I'll pour it right out of the cup, but I wanna be a little more exact this time. So I'm just gonna use a sandwich bag and another cup. And you could use a piping bag, but I find the sandwich bags are cheaper. And they're much smaller. So I have not done this, um, you know, make this, making a flower with this particular resin. I've done it quite a bit with Naked Fusion, but I have not used the moss to do the flower. So I don't know if I need to let this sit for a while and thicken up, or if I can just do it right away. I'm not really sure. <laughs> so I'm gonna do it right away anyways, cause that's how I do it with the Naked Fusion. And then that'll kind of allow me to compare the timing and, and the differences between the two. And it may turn out that I need to let it sit, but we'll find out. We will find out together. I'm just twisting the bag, getting all the resin down into one of the corners here. And then I'm just gonna snip off the corner and I'm just gonna take the tiniest bit. I don't know if you can see, um, the resin doesn't get all the way into the tip. There's a little air bubble there. And I'm just snipping off just that amount. My scissors is dull. There we go. Okay. So now I'm just going to pipe some swirls.
All right, and now I'm going to gently pull this red into the middle. And I'm just very, very lightly going over the surface. I'm not going all the way down to the mold. And then I'm just gonna hit it with the torch real quick, get those surface bubbles off. And I'm gonna let this cure now for probably five or six hours. I'm not exactly sure how long. What I'm looking for though, is that it's not sticky when I touch it, but it's still bendable. So that's the state I'm gonna look for. So when I come back um, to drape this over the bowl, I'll let you know how long it's been, but um, I will be back later. Okay, it has been six hours and this is ready to mold or drape, whatever you wanna call it. Um, you can see it's still flexible. I can move it, but it's not sticky anymore. And if I wanted to remove this from the mold, it would come out of the mold. It separates nicely from the mold. So that's the stage you want it to be at when you're gonna do this. Um, so I've debated, I've kind of gone back and forth. <laughs> if I wanna take this out of the mold and flip it over and put it in the bowl and press it down or leave it in the mold and just drape it over the bowl. And I think that is what I'm gonna do. I have this nice big bowl. I just got that at Dollar Tree, I think. Um, so I think I'm just gonna set this on here and see where it goes. <laughs> if it's gonna, because the mold is gonna prevent it from draping too far. I want to make sure it's centered. I'm going to move it this way a little bit. You can just play with it and kind of see if you can get it to the shape that you want. I'm not really trying for uh, symmetry. I want it to be a little bit um, kind of oddly shaped. So that is what I'm going for. I'm just trying to picture how this is going to sit. I think this will be good actually. It's it's curved on all sides. Obviously it's more curved on in some areas than others, but I'm okay with that. I think it seems fairly level if I'm looking at it from the side. So it'll sit nicely on the table. So yeah, I think I'm gonna leave it like this and see what I get. So I'm gonna let it cure like this um, and then I will be back to demold. We'll see what happens. Okay, it is the next day and take it off the bowl there. It's all cured. <laughs> All right, let's get this demolded. Pull out of the way. I'm really eager to see what the underside looks like with that design. So there's some transparency in the middle. All right, flipping it over. Oh, how pretty. Let's see if it sits. It sits. Oh, that turned out so amazing. The glitter on the sides. It's so pretty. Well, there you go. I am absolutely thrilled with this. <laughs> Let me see if I can, um, I can get some better close-ups this way, maybe. It's kind of hard to see. So the um, I'm sorry, <laughs> thinking too many things. So the petals, it looks like they did spread. Oh, a little bubble there. Um, 
but they're a little harder to see the edges. They kind of get fuzzy on the edge compared to the white. When I use white for flowers, but it's still spread. Still made a really cool pattern and you can see it a lot better in the middle where I poured the clear. Not as much in the area where there was um, the yellow and the orange. So maybe I'll try this again and try to use a little bit more transparent colors. But anyways, I'm super thrilled with this. It looks like a beautiful flower. So as always, thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys again next time. Bye.